Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you two growing updates here in the greenhouse, both the chicken fodder, which you can see right behind me, and the lettuce we started a couple of weeks ago. And then we're gonna to head to the studio and work on pressing some beautiful flowers. I don't know if you can tell, but it's raining right now. And it was kind of snowing on us this morning. It's just kind of a gray, dreary, winter day. The girls are looking nice. Yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. It was almost that first taste of spring. You know, when you can go outside and play on the lawn, and we did, we got a big bouncy ball, played out on the lawn, took a walk around the garden. There's still snow out in some areas, but it was just wonderful. And honestly, our 10 day forecast looks amazing here in Eastern Oregon as well. We have a lot of rain on it, which is great, um, but all temps in like the low 40s, high 30s, and very few nights below freezing, which for January is kind of weird for us, but I will take it, so nice. First update, the wheat has been in the trays for 10 days. This is the growth on it. You can kind of see what's going on there with the roots. I'm gonna let it grow just a little bit more before we start breaking it up into pieces, which you can see is easy to do, and giving it to the chickens. Today, before we head into the studio, I'm also going to prep these two trays and get these growing because the chickens will roll through this super fast. So I did start the preparation process by soaking some wheat. I put that in there yesterday. We'll link the original video when I started these seeds, just uh, in case you want to know more detail, like what kind of seeds you can start and how to do it, that sort of thing. It's so, so easy. Um, and it's just essentially supplemental chicken feed to give your chickens in the middle of winter, nice fresh greens. So I will prep those other two trays and get those going before we head in. But I also wanted to show you the lettuce. So this is the butter head lettuce we started. It's been just over two weeks since we started this. Don't those look awesome? I come by and kind of brush my hands over them every day several times. I just love seeing this fresh growth and they look so beautiful and tidy and perfect. I love it. And then this is our tray of Crispino Iceberg. I did lose one cell. I had one seedling come up in here and then um, I don't know what happened to it. It didn't look like it had damped off. When a seedling damps off, it's basically a fungus that affects seedlings as they're coming up. And it almost looks like somebody took their fingers and pinched the base of the seedling and made it super weak. And sometimes they just completely like pinch off right there at that point. So I didn't see any evidence of that, but I don't know. And it, none of the rest of the seedlings have done that. So who knows? It is interesting to me that these are much leggier. Like they have much taller stems and just bigger than the Casey lettuce and they've been growing in essentially the same spot, same sort of light, all of those things, same watering schedule. At this point, you do have the option to take them out of the cells. You could separate them if you wanna keep both seedlings and you can replant them higher up the stem if you want to. Um, that way, you know, they just don't have quite as much flop. I think mine will be fine in the end, so I'm not gonna go to the trouble. Also, um, like I explained in my initial seeding, you know, when I seeded these lettuce uh, seeds, I talked about how you could um, take these out and separate them for twice the amount of seedlings if you wanted to, or you can just you know pull one out or cut one out uh, to thin them out. But at this point, I'm just kind of letting them be out here. Uh, let me see what the temperature is out here. I think we've got it set to not go below 60 now. It's it, Right now it's 64 degrees in here. So just to give you an idea of what kind of temperatures they're growing in, fortunately lettuce likes cooler temps, which is great. Uh, if it was a little bit warmer, they'd probably be growing a bit faster, but I'm happy with it. I'm also really happy with our lawn. And we were just talking, Aaron and I, about how we need to take the wire off. Now that the grass is up and thick, the wire was just there to be a deterrent to the cats so that they didn't use it as a litter box. So I think we're you know thick enough, grass is thick enough to where we can pop that up and we can start having picnics on it, letting the kids play on it. I also thought it would be fun once the kids are maybe done done with it. You know, we've had a few picnics and they've been out here playing on it because I can't imagine this little patch of grass is gonna, you know, hold that much entertainment. You never know. But I thought it would be fun, you know, when the grass starts to look a bit rough to pop some wildflower seeds or some cool annual flowers. Like I've got some larkspur seeds in the refrigerator. I could pop some of those in there, keep them watered and see what we can do. See if we can get kind of like a little meadow going on in here. Wouldn't that be pretty? Okay, let me prep these quick, then we'll head in.
Okay, all done. I was initially using these as a water catch tray when I watered these, but they really didn't drip that much, honestly. Like I, I don't have to water them all that much, so they weren't really serving a huge purpose. They'll be much better used as secondary trays. So exciting. Oh, I love this. And our cats stay out of it. The cats are in here all the time. In fact, the sides don't close all the way because of the sides that um, roll up on their own uh, and roll back down on their own. So there's like a huge flap, like a huge overlap um, on the sides, but they can still skinny their way through there and get in here. And so they come in here and sleep all the time because it's a nice warm, dry spot. So I have like a water dish in here, but they leave everything alone, thankfully. I knew they wouldn't leave the grass alone, but the wheatgrass, they don't seem to care about it at all. Okay, let's head into the studio now. Okay. I think I've got everything on this table that we're gonna need. Look at the flowers we're gonna be working with today. Aren't they pretty, just so bright and fresh? Picked these up at the grocery store this morning. I thought they had some really fun ones to offer here. I even picked some of the uh, ones that weren't looking as good, like somebody may not wanna buy this uh, lot for an arrangement because they were looking like they were starting to wilt, but that doesn't matter for us uh, today. And there's some really pretty, are these asters right here? Just really beautiful color right now. I've got a couple of different types of flower press here. This is like the traditional type. I mean, you can use heavy books too. That's what I used to use growing up. Uh, and then I've got a microwave flower press. I was working on a little flat layout last night. Isn't that pretty? I was just using some of the stuff that I've saved from other projects through the years. Isn't that fun to see color this time of year? Here's some more. Some of the tools I like to use. I always have a pair of scissors handy. Um, I've got some little brushes in here in case I'm doing like some Mod Podge. And tweezers are essential. I've also got some silica gel crystals right here. These are an awesome way to dry flowers if you don't need them to be completely flat. We've done quite a few projects with pressed flowers through the years. Do you remember the pressed flowers on the pumpkin project that we did a long time ago? Boy, that must have been like the first year we lived in this house, maybe. Maybe six years ago, maybe it was five, I don't know. It seems like it was a long time ago. We did those pressed flower, the dried flower um, resin candle holders where you had like a larger glass candle holder and then a smaller one and you do resin in between the two. I had enough room to even pop like miniature fairy garden pieces down in and that was really fun. Um, we did a picture frame, like a, I did a shadow box type picture frame with flowers I had dried in the silica gel crystals because those are just more, like you can preserve flowers in their natural state, like bigger roses, dahlias, sunflowers, things like that. And then some flat ones too. Um, what else have we done? Oh, ornaments. We made those, bake, was it baking soda and salt ornaments? Is that right? Boy, I haven't done these projects for so long, I have to remember, but I still have all those ornaments. They're in my natural Christmas decor box. And I'm not really wanting to get any big projects done with the flowers today. I really just want to process what we've got in the bucket. Uh, let's get through these, get them in presses, try out the microwave press. I just want to show you how that works and how the silica gel uh, crystals work, but it's going to be a process just to get this done. So we'll save the projects. I've got some resin projects in my mind that I want to do for another day, which means I'm going to move this to a separate spot, hopefully not wrecking it. Okay, let's get into this box first. This is what the microwave flower press looks like. So you've got the plastic clips on the outside. This is a heavy duty plastic lid. You can see that there are air holes at the top. Inside, there's like a thick felt mat. Oh, I have stuff in here. Do I? Huh, excellent. From the last time I tried it. Oh, they're really dry. <laughs> okay, hang on. Ooh, it preserved the color of that salt or lavender rather really well. That's beautiful. I can add these to my collection. Anyway, in the center, you can see there are these two pieces of white material, and then there's this other thick, kind of felty piece, and then another plastic lid with the holes. So, with this microwave press, you basically load your flowers in the same way as you would normally do. And some of the basics on uh, drying flowers. If you're wanting to press them and get the best quality flowers, you do want to pick the best quality flowers. So if you're picking them out of your own garden, then you would go out in the morning, preferably after the dew has dried off, but not until the, like, the heat of the day. Um, and you would pick the freshest looking ones with the best color. I've got some really great fresh 
perfect flowers here to work with today just from the grocery store which is what we have to do in the middle of winter if we want to do this sort of project and you know I do try like with this tray here I do try to gather things from my own garden as I have time to do it so that I do have some of my own flowers to work with because that is special but it's still a wonderful thing to do even if it's grocery store flowers you do want to be careful about what type of flowers you're loading together on the same level like if you're loading up your normal flower press like this one right here let me just open it up so we've got our weight on the top and then you've got different layers there's a card thick cardboard right here and then there's layers of like this blotting paper which you can use parchment paper wax paper whatever you want to make sure whatever flowers you're putting together on the same level are the same thickness. Let me see if I can show you, find an example to show you why that's important. Let's see. Yeah, these are so, these are so old. Some of them have faded a bit and some do retain color better than others. And you learn through the years, which ones do. Okay. So like in this level right here, this one did not press very nicely. I was just trying to press a dahlia just to see. It wasn't like a perfect dahlia to begin with and it was super thick. And then I had some little clematis flowers that I put in there with it, which were a lot thinner. So what happens if you've got the really thick one, you can't get it like the weight pressed down far enough for both of these. Like this one's still going to, as it dries, it'll get flatter, but it's still gonna pop that layer above it up higher than it needs to be for this, if that makes sense. So it allows these petals to desiccate and to like shrink up without like pressing down flat. So you can see like with this petal right here, it like shrunken toward the plant and it just doesn't, or shrunken toward the middle. They just don't press as nicely. This layer did okay. We've got some clary sage right here. These are some cosmos. Um, these were the thinnest of all the flowers. I've got some little itty bitty baby violas. But if you get in close on that, you can see that that one kind of shrunk up and the edges of the petals shrunk in and it's kind of, it's not nice and flat. It's got kind of ridges in it because these flowers were all thicker than this viola was. So when we're looking at these type of flowers, I mean, ideally you're putting all the same variety on the same level. For the microwave press, it won't matter as much because we only have the one level, but like I wouldn't want to try to do, I've got some Gerbera daisies which are really thick. These are going to be hard to press. I don't even know if these are going to press well. I thought we would try them in the microwave to see, uh, but you wouldn't want to put something with this thick of a base with something that hardly has any base at all. You know, something really fine like that. Clary Sage is really pretty as a dried flower though. Okay, so I'm gonna put my lower layer down first. Let's try some of these. So these are nice because they naturally are a little bit more flat. You do wanna cut the stem as close to the base as possible. So they're as flat as possible. We're gonna put our next layer down. That little, It's like a linen cotton kind of thing, I don't know. We put it upside down like this. And I think I'm just gonna line up four in here just to see how it goes. Then we put this cloth back on top and our felt pad, our lid, and our clips. There, it's ready to roll. Okay, microwave time. We're gonna start with 30 seconds. Oh, wait a minute, clear, 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, it's been 30 seconds. I'm just gonna let it cool off. It's not that warm actually. A little bit warm. And I'm gonna go another 20 seconds. This part, how long you have to microwave your flowers, is completely dependent on what kind of flower you are drying. How thick it is, how much moisture they have, uh, that sort of thing. And so I usually start with 30 seconds and then do 20 second intervals after that. I usually don't open it up though for a couple of different cycles. Those yellow daisies are a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it another 20 seconds and then we'll check on them. Ooh, the bottom of it's warm. Okay, I'm gonna go slow and be gentle. Oh yeah, it's steaming. Let's let it cool off for a second. Oh my goodness, you 
guys. Okay, I'm gonna let them cool off just a little bit more. They're very warm, but they are gorgeous. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at how flat it is now. It's still pretty warm in the center, so I'm gonna have to just double check that there's not too much moisture in there. But you know, if we just even let it set and air dry for a minute, you know, like overnight, <laughs> to, before we use it in a project, I think you'd be good. Isn't that awesome? What do you guys think? And I think that's how I'm gonna approach drying most of the flowers that we're working with today, uh, because they do press a little bit better, like the color's better, more vibrant. Of course, it's a lot faster, so it's instant gratification, which, you know, let's be honest, that's how we want most projects to be. Uh, so, it, you know, in the traditional presses, it, there's something really fun and magical about that too. Um, and I might do a few in my press today that way. Uh, but it is, you know, a project for the long haul. It takes usually a week to two, two weeks before I start checking on mine to see how they're looking. The colors don't preserve quite as bright and punchy as they do with the microwave press. Uh, but, you know, it's a fun way to do it. And you don't have to have a specific press for flowers. I have another one inside that has like a, a lid that comes up and then you push it down and then there's like a crank on the top where you can crank it down um, and put the amount of weight you need on it. But I just feel like the pressure, even in my traditional press here, um, the pressure I can't get 100% even. Uh, old books work really well too, like an old set of encyclopedias. If you can put, you know, some parchment paper or wax paper in there with flowers in between some of the pages and then stack some books on top. Uh, that works equally as well. The only other thing I wanted to show you before we dry the rest of these flowers is this sand. So this is one, like I said, you can preserve flowers in more of their natural state. So like this one, the Gerbera daisy here. If we wanted to preserve this one to where it looked like this for an arrangement, of course, it's gonna be you know in this exact shape when it's dry. Um, it won't be flat, so we can't use it in a flat arrangement. So you just pop your flower down in the sand, kind of dig it in there, and just build up around it. See how the sand kind of just goes in between all the petals? I've done this with all kinds of things. It works beautifully with sunflowers, beautifully with dahlias. I've even done it with artichokes. And what this silica gel does is it just gradually sucks the moisture out of the plant. And I wait a few days on that. So we'll leave the Gerbera daisy in there for a few days, let it dry and then uh, unearth it after that. And you just have to do that very carefully, very gently. I usually use a small brush, like one of my little uh, brushes that's in my dried flower supplies and just brush that sand away so I don't accidentally rip any of the petals. But obviously we can't take that out of the sand today, but that's how that works. So at this point, now that we can see how these flowers look, let's just do the rest of the bucket.
check it out. Here are all the flowers that just came out of the microwave press. Can you believe that? Oh, it's just so fun to have a way to do it a lot quicker. And you know, these are bright flowers anyway. I mean, if you look at this tray right here, these are all ones that were tra uh, pressed traditionally. And these, of course, these were dyed flowers. So those are bright, but you can tell the yellow and the blue and the pinks, those are all their natural colors. And they're nice and saturated in color as well. But those took a lot longer to get that way than these did. I'm really happy too with the Gerbera daisies because those have such a thick base. I didn't think that they would press as, as good as they did. These right here are the ones that did not make it out of the press. <laughs> so this one just kind of like, uh, I don't know, just looks kind of weird and I didn't even let this one go through its full drying process. I just pulled it out. And then these are mums. They were bigger mums. And I mean, they're still squishy right here. Like, look at this like soggy, squishy in the center, gross. I didn't even take these through their full drying process because you can see, and it could be a power setting on the microwave, which that's something to consider when you're drying all of these things, but they were starting to turn brown. So I just decided that those were probably a pass on this go around anyway, but all of these turned out beautiful. I love the little dianthus. They look so pretty and sweet. And the little sprays of asters. <sighs> They are just so, so beautiful. And I really like the greens too. Look at how pretty those are. Those are always really nice to work in. It's kind of like having little things like this right here, uh, leaves, this type of thing. It just makes the design a little bit more dynamic. I also filled up the container that has the silica gel crystals with more flowers. Initially, I had just the one Gerbera in there, but uh, now I have the one Gerbera plus a bunch of the yellow daisies, uh, both the smaller mums and then the yellow daisies because I thought it would be fun to do a little project with those that were not quite so flat. Um, and then like I did mention with the these mums here, I think messing with your microwave, <laughs> the power settings, there's 10 different power settings on this one in here. Uh, so I think especially on the yellow ones, I maybe could have had a little bit better result had I just uh, messed with it a little bit more, but I was getting more of the hang of things toward the end. Uh, and it's just something, I don't know, there's a little bit of a learning curve, uh, but it's just such a fun thing to see results so fast. And you can see also what I have left over here. Pretty much all stuff that is not worth drying except for this. I'm going to continue uh, drying all of the rest of the greens here so that I can add to that little collection, but that is it. And this will make for some really fun projects. I love that they're as bright as they are. We've got lots of different stuff to work with now. And you guys, that is it for today's video. Just wanted to give you those couple of project updates out in the greenhouse. I'm gonna try my very hardest to be really good about updating all of our projects this year. I know sometimes we can get so much on our plate that I forget things and uh, don't end up updating. So you'll probably see those appear in multiple videos um, as things progress and there's something to show. Uh, but it was so fun to be in here too this afternoon working with some really brightly colored flowers on such a gray day. I don't know though, it looks like the clouds are starting to break and we might even get some blue skies. We're right at the very end of the day though. Look at that. I see blue sky over there. Oh, that's glorious. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.